Good morning, YouTubers. My name is Nubia. I am in recovery. I am reading out of the Life Recovery Bible, all the way from Anoka, Minnesota. Today we are continuing in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, a valley of dry bones. Okay, this is a little windy. A little, not too much. Yeah. Father God, thank you for this amazing, beautiful winter day. I don't know if we're still in fall, but anyways, thank you so much for this amazing day. Um, please allow me to read clearly and slowly, to speak clearly and slowly, and to think clearly and slowly so I can clearly relay your message. Thank you. Amen. A valley of dry bones. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dry out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I reply, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together. and attach themselves to complete skeletons. Then, as I watched muscles and flesh form over the bones, the skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into the bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They're all saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord, that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said what I said yes the Lord has spoken reunion of Israel and Judah again a message came to me from the Lord son of man take a piece of wood and carve on and carve on it these words this represents Judah and its allies tribes then take another piece and carve these words on it this represents Ephraim and the northern tribes of Israel now hold them together in your hands as if they were one piece of wood. When your people ask you what your actions mean, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will take Ephraim and the northern tribes and join them to Judah. I will make them one piece of wood in my hand. 
can hold out the pieces of wood you have inscribed to the people so the people can see them and give them this message from the sovereign Lord. I will gather the people of Israel among the nations. I will bring them home to their own land from the places where they have been scattered. I will purify them into the one nation on the mountain of Israel. And one king will rule them all. No longer would they be divided into two nations or into two kingdoms. They would never again populate themselves with their idols and vile names and rebellion. For I will save them from their sinful apostasy. Okay, Google. It doesn't work when I'm recording. Apostasy. Apostasy. I have to remember that. Apostasy. I will cleanse them. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be their kin and they will have only one shepherd. They will obey my regulations and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave my servant Jacob, the land where their ancestors lived. They and their children. What? Are you distracting me? I'm reading. They will live in the land I gave my servant Jacob, the land where their ancestors lived. They and their children and their grandchildren after them. They and their grandchildren and their grandchildren after them will live there forever, generation after generation, and my servant David will be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. I will keep them. I will give them their land and increase their numbers and I will put my temple among them forever. I will make their home, I will make my home among them. This is guy, he's, he, this guy, this guy, this guy. It's just, So what is this what oh, oh, oh good job it was too crowded for him too much going on over here oh And their children and their grandchildren after them will live there forever, generation after generation. And my servant David will be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. I will give them their land and increase their numbers. And I will put my temple among them forever. I will make my home among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. And when my temple is among them forever, the nations will know that I am the Lord who makes Israel holy. Oh, that's a good one. There, I like that. Footnote. Ezekiel, Ezekiel was shown a valley filled with dry, lifeless bones. What an illustration of powerlessness. But as the dry bones were a picture of complete helplessness and hopelessness, so God's Spirit provided new life and complete sustenance. With God, defeat became uncompromising victory. This principle applies to us as we deal with the devastation of our addictions. Along our failures and their terrible consequences have already been accomplished, but with God's help, we can be assured of victory and new life. Up there. A message for Gog. Who is Gog? Is that a city? It's a city.
Oh no, one more footnote. God promised that one day he will make his home among his people. This took place when God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. As we study Jesus' life on earth, we discover who God really is. God still lives among us and in us in the person of his spirit through our world is filled though our world is filled with sin we can all look forward to the day when jesus christ the true shepherd will return to guide his people in righteousness and truth we can begin god's reign in our own lives today by obeying god's program for joyful and healthy living <laughs> sorry i got a little emotional right there A message for God. This is another message that came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face Gog of the land of Magog, the prince who rules over the nations of Meshech, Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. Gog, I am your enemy. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and lead you to and lead you out. Yeah, I don't have a really good one. There we go. I have to, you know, shift once in a while. Otherwise, my lower limbs get numb, you know. Sun, you want sun? No, it's rigged. Big boy went to the sun, he's smart. Give him this message from the sobering Lord. I am your enemy. I will turn you. Nope, I have to go to the sun. Yes, mister. Yes, you are smart. Better. Thank you. Okay, let's go to that. Bring the actual table. When I bring the table, it doesn't move when I move. That's okay. I was being lazy. I didn't know, I wasn't being lazy, I just wanted to start reading already. All right. Give him this message from the Sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws to lead you out with your whole army, your horses and charioteers in full armor and a great horde armed with shields, shields and swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya will you join will join you too and all the weapons Gomer and all its armies will also join you along with the enemies of Beth Togarma from the distant north and many others get ready get ready be prepared keep all the armies around you mobilized and take command of them a long time from now you will be calling to action in the distant future you will soup you will soup down on the land of Israel, which will be enjoying peace after recovering from war and after its people have returned from many lands to the mountains of Israel. You and all your allies, a vast and awesome army, will roll down on them like a storm and cover the land like a cloud. This is what the sovereign Lord says. At that, at that time evil thoughts will come to your mind and you will devise a wicked scheme. You will say Israel is an unprotected and field is an unprotected land and filled with unwalled villages. I will march against and this against her and destroy these people before 
and destroy these people who live in such confidence. I will go to those formerly desolate cities that are now filled with people who have returned from exile in many nations. I will capture vast amounts of plunder, for the people are rich with livestock and other possessions now. They think the whole world revolves ab around them. But Shiva and Dedan and the merchants of Tarchish will ask, Do you really think the armies you have gathered can rob them of silver and gold? Do you think you can drive away their livestock and seize their, go their goods and carry off plunder? Therefore, son of men, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. When my people are living in peace in their land, then you will rouse yourself. You will come from your homeland in the distant north with your vast cavalry and your mighty army, and you will attack my people Israel, Israel covering the land like a cloud. At that time, in the distant future, I will bring you against my land as everyone watches, and my holiness will be displayed by, that, by what happens to you. Gog. Then all the nations will know that I am the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord asks. Are you the one I was talking about long ago when I announced through Israel prophets that in the future I will bring you against my people? But this is what the sovereign Lord says. When God invades the land of Israel, my fury will boil over. In my jealousy and blazing anger, I will promise a mighty shaking in the land of Israel on that day. All living things, the fish in the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, the small animal that scurry along the ground, and all the people on earth will quake in terror at my presence. Mountains will be thrown down. Cliffs will crumble, walls will fall to the earth. I will summon the sword against you on all the hill of Israel, says the sovereign Lord. Your men will turn their swords against each other. I will punish you and your armies with disease and bloodshed. I will send torrential rain, hailstones, fire, and burning sulfur. In this way, I will show my greatness and holiness, and I will make myself known to all the nations of the world. Then they will know I am the Lord. Footnote. Why did I look at the sun? I love the sun. I always look at the sun, and I'm always blind for like the next 10 seconds. I always do it. Talk about insanity. Every creature has the footnote. Every creature has the power to choose to either obey God or stand against Him. God has arranged His mighty forces against God and against God's people. He had left God and His divine will out of His thinking altogether. The destruction of God promised by Ezekiel reveals the consequences of choosing to stand against God and His will. As we see these terrible consequences, we should be motivated to admit our own failures and take steps to follow God's will for our lives. Oh no, you're looking at me. Okay, now, now, now can you see me? I'm sorry, I just, I'm looking at the time I have left for recording. Ah, I'm not gonna get to 43 minutes, that's okay like this there we go. <sighs> why do I want perfection perfection it's only I don't know why I get stuck in it you know footnote God declared his power in no uncertain uncertain terms the greatest military and political powers in the world would array themselves against God and his people. But when God intervened, even the greatest enemies would be destroyed by the, his powerful hand. We all face powerful enemies, both internal and external, which we are powerless to stop or control. If we turn ourselves over to God, however, even the most powerful enemies can be defeated. 
With God on our side, no enemy is too powerful and no life is beyond recovery. Chapter 39. The slaughter of God's hordes. Sun's going down. What do you see, big boy? Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. Hey, you're so handsome. Son of uh, the slaughter of Gog's horde, son of men, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, O Gog, ruler of the nations of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around and drive you toward the mountains of Israel, bringing you from the distant north. I will knock the bow from your left hand and the arrows from your right hand. I will leave you helpless. You and your army and your allies will all die on the mountains. I will feed you to the vultures and wild animals. You will fall in the open fields, for I have spoken, says the sovereign Lord. And I will drain down fire on Magog and on all your allies who live safely on the coast. Then they will know that I am the Lord. In this way, I will make known my holy name among my people of Israel. I will not let anyone bring shame on it. And the nations too will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. That day of judgment will come, says the sovereign Lord. Everything will happen just as I have declared it. When the people in the towns of Israel will go out and pick up your small and large shields, bows and arrows, javelins and spears, and they will use them for fuel. They will be enough. There will be enough to last to last them seven years. They will need to cut wood from the fields of forest, for these weapons will give them all the fuel they need. They will plunder those who plan to plunder them, and they will rob those who plan to rob them, says the sovereign Lord. And I will make a vast graveyard of Gog and his hordes in the valley of the travelers, east of the Dead Sea. I will block the way of those who travel there, and they will change the name of the place to the valley of God's hordes. It will be, it will take seven months of the people of Israel to bury the bodies and cleanse the land. Everyone in Israel will help for it, will help, for it will be a glorious victory for Israel when I demonstrate my glory on that day, says the sovereign Lord. After seven months, teams of men will be appointed to search the land for skeletons to bury so the land will be made clean again. Wherever bones are found, a marker will be set up so the burial crews will, be ta will take them to the bury of the valley of Gog's hordes. There will be a town, their name Hamona, which means horde, and so the land will finally be cleansed. And now, son of man, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Call all the birds and wild animals. Say to them, gather together for my great sacrificial feast. Come from far and near to the mountains of Israel and there eat flesh and drink blood. Eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of princesses as though they were rams, lambs, goats, and bulls. All fattened animals from Bashan. Gorge yourself with flesh until you are glutton, drink blood with you until you are drunk. This is the sacrificial feast I have prepared for you. Feast at the banquet table. Feast on horses and charioteers, O mighty men and all kinds of valiant warriors, says the sovereign Lord. In this way, I will demonstrate my glory to the nations. Everyone will see the punishment I have inflicted on them and the power of my fist when I strike. And from that time on the people of Israel, I will know that I am the Lord, their God. The nations would then know why Israel was sent away to exile. It was punishment for sin, for they were unfaithful to their God. Therefore, I turn away from them 
and let their enemies destroy them. I turn my face away and punish them because of their defilement and their sins. Restoration of God's people. So now, this is this is what the sovereign Lord says. If we, I will end the captivity of my people. I will have mercy on all of Israel, for I jealously guard my holy reputation. They will ac accept responsibility for their past shame and unfaithfulness after they come home to live in peace in their own land with no one to bother them. When I bring them home from the lands of their enemies, I will display my holiness among them for all the nations to see. Then my people will know that I am the Lord, their God, because I sent them away to exile and brought them home again. I will leave none of my people behind, and I will never again turn my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit upon the people of Israel. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. I am going to move to the sunlight again. Hello, son. Footnote. Every creature has the power to choose to either obey their God or stand against him. God has arranged his mighty forces against God's people. I already read, I already read this. I read this ahead of time. <laughs> 39. Footnote. Without God, the future of Israel was dark and hopeless. But no matter what... I want to see where the sun's at. That, that, that's why. And if there's clouds around it or not. But no matter what their present suffering, they could hope in the future, knowing that God still had great things in store for them. God is a God of recovery and restoration. It is part of his plan for creation that the power of sin be broken and its destruction be reversed. God restored his people so his promise of a savior, Jesus the Messiah, could be fulfilled and though his savior and through his savior we can be restored no matter how great our past sins or how terrible our present circumstances chapter 40 the new temple area on April 28th through the there is the sun during the 12th 25th year of our captivity 14 years after the fall of Jerusalem the Lord took hold of me in a vision from God he took me to the land of Israel and sent me down on a very high mountain from there I could see toward the south what appeared to be a city as he brought me nearer I saw a man whose face shone like bronze standing beside a gateway entrance stone like shone there is big boy he was holding in his hand a linen measuring cord and a measuring rod he said to me son of man watch and listen pay close attention for everything I show you to everything I show you you have been brought here so that I can show you many things. Then you will return to the people of Israel and tell them everything you have seen. The East Gateway. I could see a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The men took a measuring rod that was ten and a half feet long and measured the wall, and the wall was ten and a half feet thick and ten and a half feet high. Then he went over to the eastern gateway. He climbed the steps and measured the threshold of the gateway and it was ten and a half feet front to back. I don't have to find it. There he goes. He's going back. Then he went to the eastern gateway. 
He climbed the steps and measured the threshold of the gateway. He was ten and a half feet front to back. There were guard alcoves on each side built into the gateway passage. Each of these alcoves was ten and a half feet square with a distance between them of eight and three quarters feet along the passage wall. The gateway inner threshold, which led to the entry room at the inner end of the gateway passage was ten and a half feet front to back. He also measured the entry room of the gateway. It was 14 feet across with supporting columns, three and a half feet thick. This entry room was at the inner end of the gateway structure facing toward the temple. There were three guard alcoves on each side of the gateway passage. Each had the same measurements and the dividing walls separating them also identical. The men measured the gateway entrance, which was 17 and a half feet wide at the opening and 22 and three quarters feet wide in the gateway passage. In front of each of the guard alcoves was a 25 inch curb. The alcoves themselves were 10 and a half feet on each side. Then he measured the entire width of the gateway, measuring the distance between the back wall of facing car, guard alcoves. This distance was 43 and 3 quarters feet. He measured the dividing walls along the inside of the gateway up to the entry room of the gateway. This distance was 100 feet. The full length of the gateway passage was 87 and a half feet from one end to the other. There he recessed windows that narrowed inward through the walls of the guard alcoves and their dividing walls. There, he also, there were also windows in the entry room. The surfaces of the dividing walls were decorated with carved palm trees. The outer courtyard. Then the membra then the men brought me through the gateway into the outer courtyard of the temple. A stone pavement ran along the walls of the courtyard, and 30 rooms were built against the walls, opening onto the pavement. This pavement flanked the gates and extended out from the walls into the courtyard, the same distance as the gateway entrance. This was the lower, lower pavement than the men measured across the temple's outer courtyard, between the outer and inner gateways. The distance was 175 feet. The North Gateway. The men measured the gateway on the north just like the one on the east. Here too, there were three guard alcoves on each side, which dividing wall with dividing walls and an entry room. All the measurements matched those of the east gateway. The gateway passage was 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three quarters feet wide between the back front between the back walls of facing guard alcoves. The windows, the, the, the windows, the entry room, and the palm tree decorations were identical to those in the east gateway. There were seven steps leading up to the gateway entrance, and the entry room was at the inner end of the gateway passage. Here on the north side, just as on the east, there was another gateway leading to temples to the temple's inner courtyard directly opposite this uh, this outer gateway the distance between the two gate gateways was 175 feet the south gateway then the man took me around to the south gateway and measured its various parts and they were exactly the same as in the others it had windows along the walls as the others did and there was an entry room where the gateway passage opened into the outer courtyard. And like the others, the gateway passage was 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three quarters feet wide between the back walls of facing guard alcoves. This gateway also had a stairway of seven steps leading up to it and an entry room at the inner end and palm tree decorations along the dividing walls. And here again, directly opposite the outer gateway was another gateway that led into the inner courtyard. The distance between the two gateways was 175 feet. Oh no, my phone's gonna die. All right, let's gonna finish. 
just want to finish this gate um gateways to the inner courtyard gateways to the inner courtyard then the men took me to the south gateway leading into the inner courtyard he measured it and he had uh, it's just it's gonna die in two minutes so thank you guys for tuning in i'm not gonna be able to finish i have gateways of the inner courtyard so that's where i'm at there's like another page and a page i'm not gonna finish the page in, in two minutes I'm just gonna blow, blow, blow through it and you're not gonna understand a word so thank you guys for tuning in and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you tomorrow